Hello everyone, it's I, Wacky Anime What If, here to present you with What If Issei Was Betrayed and Snapped His Limiter, Part 2. I hope you all enjoy, and if you haven't heard, I have a second channel known as Midnight Psycho. It's a gaming channel. I'm not currently active on it as, as active as I'd like to be, but I will try later on. I'll be playing something like Resident Evil Village, Phasmophobia, or even Among Us. So let's go ahead and get into this, though. Issei is currently in a very bad situation. He had just escaped, and he's currently being held up by Grafia and all the other workers he decided to blend in with. The reason why they wore those hats on their heads is because the Grimmery, Grimmery household hated people that looked ugly or hideous to them or low-class people in general. So they had them all wear mat, and uh, not even masks, just hats, and lowered it down to their head. So they always have to look down whenever they saw anyone, so that their unsightliness didn't become contagious, t contagious is what they said. Everyone is currently lined up into a circle, and everyone's side by side. Issei is currently thinking about a way of how to get out of the situation since Grafia just told them all to remove their hats. Everyone is starting to remove their hats in an order. Issei is the fifth one to have to remove their hats. When he sees the fourth one remove their hat, Issei is about to remove his, but then he kicks the guy beside him and says, Everyone, it's him! He points to him, the guy right beside him to the left, points towards him and says, It's him, everyone! And he... The guy just says, no, it's not, it's not me, I'm not Issei Hyodo. He takes off his hat, and everyone sees him and says, no, that's not Issei Hyodo. So, could you please take off your hat? And before they could even say anything, Issei was already gone. He immediately ran, ran once he caused a confusion. But he didn't get that far. He ran a mad dash to the left, and ran so far that he was in front of the mansion already. But once he was in front of the mansion, there were devils all in the air with what's known as a sacred gear killer. They're guns which are, resemble AK-47s, but the bullets in them make sacred gears malfunction. Mostly, they'll explode. So, Issei already knows this because he was in the dungeon and he heard about their development. But him seeing them now... It's quite terrifying. A single one of those bullets that, if any of those hit him, he's screwed. Because it's not the bullets that are really effective. It's the liquid inside the bullets that are effective. Issei sees five people in the air aiming downwards at him, about to fire their guns, before he sees Grafia directly behind him with... with tons of guards, 17 guards behind her, and already has a magic circle in her hand and ready to fire. Issei throws his hat in the air, and out of pure instinct, they all look up towards the air, towards the hat, and Issei starts running, trying to run towards the front gate. He's so close to escaping, but he hears loud, loud gunshots go off. He looks behind him, and he sees a mountain of bullets. But he notices that they're all quite slow. He even has time to count them, so he just starts to count them very quickly. And he already counted 475 bullets in total heading towards him. And one magic beam. Issei is starting to think about what to do, very quickly, mind you. He ends up moving to the left and dodging around 17 bullets and 40 of them in front of him. He just ducks down, dodges the whole 40, and then he starts maneuvering around them very slowly. He starts to look like he's dancing almost to everyone else. He's dancing around the bullets in a very majestic dance, is what they all see. But Issei's just dodging them like nothing, to be honest. They are, they couldn't even see the majority of him. Like, he was going so fast, they only saw the after images. <laughs> but Issei didn't know this, because... He wasn't keeping track. He was just trying to survive. So, once Issei dodged all the bullets, he didn't have time to process how quick he was going. So, he just looked to the front where the gate was, and he started running. 
but he noticed that he has to push the gates open. But he ran so quickly that he just passed through the gates. And once he passed through the gates, he looked behind him. He pointed the middle finger out and says, Go fuck yourselves, you fuckers. And then he looked downwards and realized, Oh shit, I, I've got the mansions positioned right on a cliff. Should have thought this through. And he just falls down. And he no longer is a devil at all. Because he ripped those pieces out a while back in the dungeon. And it didn't kill him because of Drake. So once he falls downwards and is falling off the mountain, he's thinking, oh shit, I'm probably going to die. But he puts his legs right into the side of the mountain and starts sliding down. Unharmed completely. He expected when his legs hit the side of the cliff that they would break or something. But no, no, no. He just broke into the, into the cliff side. So he landed down gracefully and with not even a scratch on him. He started to walk away, but he realized he's not really that far away from the mansion. He just barely got out of it. And before he could really recuperate from what all happened, something terrifying would appear. He ends up looking all around, and he notices that there's more guards positioned outside the mansion than there were inside. He sees around a whole squadron in front of him. But then he's wondering, how is his vision so good? It was really bad before. Even for a devil. And then he realized, maybe all the training paid off somehow? His vision was around 700 meters in front of him. Not even devils would be able to have that good of eyesight. But he knows he can't take out entire squadrons. Because he thought it was just one squadron... But once he looked beside them, he saw a second squadron, a third squadron, and a fourth squadron. All with around 1.2 thousand soldiers. He counted those very quickly. But then he realized, what the fuck am I doing counting all of these when I need to goddamn hide? So, he looked around and he saw bushes and trees. Because right off the cliffside was just the forest he's in. He hid inside of the bushes. And once the squadrons started to walk past Issei. Issei thought he was completely safe until he heard someone unzip his pants and he heard a leak. And then he looked up and he saw this guy was pissing, pissing in the bush, the bush that he was in. And he was very pissed. And then he saw a snake beside him. And he just had a very, very interesting idea. He grabbed the snake and he threw it directly at the guy's penis. And all of a sudden the snake was like, Hey, is, th is that a sausage? Don't mind if I do. Bites down and the guy starts screaming. And he's like, everyone, help, help, an enemy attack. And he looks downwards and he says, it's just a snake, guys. And they're like, uh, I think the snake is taking your snake off. And he's like, guys, help me. And they all ignore him. And then this one guy decides, I'll help him. He pulls the, tries to pull up the snake and then the guy ends up crying and he hears a rip and the snake just runs off with its little prize and one guy's on the ground crying and Issei is just like ooh oof I didn't know that was gonna happen ah, I kinda feel bad now but he did take a piss on me so no <laughs> and the other guy who was trying to pat the guy on the back who just lost his willy ends up saying don't worry, I mean, if Grafia or any of the Grimmery, Grimmeries would have known you took a piss on the job, I think they would have ripped it off for you anyway. And then the guy said, fuck you, man. <laughs> and then he was like, no, fuck you, you dickless bitch. <laughs> and they just started arguing. While Issei was like, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave, that's kinda awkward. So he started moving away, <laughs> like, very slowly. <laughs> and... He noticed that he was close to the magic portal that they use to go to the human world. As he was walking further and further away from the Grimmery, from the Grimmery estate, he noticed the circle in front of him. A few hundred meters above, in front of him, was the circle. But he noticed above him that there was one terrifying threat in the air, and that was. Sir Zex himself. He was surveying the area because he was in a current war with 
a certain a certain old friend of his known as Azazel they weren't on good terms but after what happened to Issei Azazel called all out war and well he had to go on the battlefield himself but Issei noticed that Sir Zex had two wings in his hands and he thinks he recognizes those wings and he remembers Azazel which he starts to get very pissed off but he knows he has to escape currently and managed to muster up more strength before fighting him. Issei has already noticed that he's gotten exponentially stronger, but it doesn't matter how strong he is currently, if if just a little bit of magic were to shoot at him, he could immediately be pierced. He's not exactly ready yet. He needs to train more, is what he's thinking. So Issei starts to do a mad dash towards the portal when Sir Zex is looking away. And once he does the mad dash, he's about one step close to the portal before he feels a pierce, a piercing sensation in his side. And right when he looks to his side, he sees Sir Zex on the ground in a throwing position and a spear that left his hand. That quickly pierced into his ribcage on his left side. Issei screamed out in pain as he put his left and right hand on the spear and pulled it out. And he threw it with all his might back at Sir Zex. And he threw with so much force that the clouds split apart. The clouds in the sky split apart. And everything under him cracked. And the, at the force it was going, the, there was shock waves appearing right behind it, propelling it faster towards Sir Zex. Sir Zex has just barely avoided it by ducking downwards. But... He didn't avoid it completely. Right when he ducked downwards, it was instantaneous. His arm, his right arm, was completely gone. And majority of his right side was gone from that one throw. But Sir Zex had a, a rare sacred gear with him. It helped him regenerate it before the smoke cleared up. And before Issa could notice that... He had done an um, unimaginable amount of damage. So once it cleared up, Issei saw there was no damage. And then he immediately thought he was out of his league going against Sir Zex this early. He needs to get stronger. So he dashed towards the magic portal. Sir Zex was about to throw more spears at him, but then realized if Issei throws one more of these spears that I throw at him back at me, I'm dead. And before he could even process what to do, Issei already stepped on the portal and teleported back to Earth. And le leaving Sir Zex in a furious mess, he started screaming to the sky saying, I'll fucking kill that brat and I'll take the sacred gear for myself. Just watch me. And Issei has finally escaped. He is now in a forest. Near Ko, Ko Town. He knows this he knows this forest though. Because he's been here for a while with Azazel sometimes. Because Azazel always trained him whenever Reese and them decided not to. So, he figured he could probably find Azazel. Because this, there's always a hideout they had in the, this forest specifically. It's the reason why he chose this location to be teleported to. He started looking around everywhere in the forest. And so he came across this little cabin. And then he noted it as the cabin that him and Azazel always spoke near. Like, they always, like, played video games in that little cabin. They played, uh, multiple other party games. They even played Spin the Bottle with a few, well, with a few hotties. Which he was pretty, he was pretty stoked about until he realized that those hotties weren't exactly hotties. And there, he realized they weren't exactly female either. And Azazel had just played a prank on him. <laughs> that son of a bitch is what he said was saying in his mind before he headed towards the cabin and noticed something terrifying when he opened the door there was blood everywhere and there was a corpse pinned and directly in front of the cabin and before we get any more into this I'm going to stop it here 
And I hope you guys will stay tuned when I make part three of this. <laughs>